Three Audio Commentary. Today, we are going to be watching a Best of Three Warcraft 3 series. We're going to be casting it live at twitch.tv slash Um We're just, screw it, we're going to do it. Um, I think, I think that the quality will be okay. If it's not, then, you know, yell at me. Um, I... It's been a long time, obviously. I just want to real quick tell you it's because I've been sick for the past few months, but um, things are pretty much good again. It's not been dire sick, just I couldn't talk. Um, so anyway, that's what that's what that was. I apologize, but hopefully we'll be able to start doing more of these again. Anyway, so let's go ahead and introduce our wonderful players and also the map, which I think you'll get a good kick out of because personally, I enjoyed it. In the 6 o'clock position, we have the red undead spawning in. It is SB WFZ. And his opponent, the orange orc, none other than ADS underscore ZDR. And where is he at? He is at the, I'm not good at these, uh, the three and a half o'clock position? Is that, is that, that's the three, right? Maybe? I don't, okay, I don't know. He's somewhere around the three o'clock position on the map. He's going for the Blade Master opener, as he probably would want to do. We're going to be seeing the old school kind of standard fiends coming out of WFZ. We see this from time to time, and I don't know what the metagame is in the past three months. It may have changed significantly. It does that occasionally in China, so... We, we will be looking out for that. Um, and then let's introduce the map. Now, this is a fan. I've, ne I've never seen this map whatsoever. I know nothing about it, but I do know one thing. I know what it's called. It's called Demon Monkey 1.2. <laughs> Demon Monkey 1.2. Uh, that is a fantastic name for a map. And I don't know why it's called Demon Monkey. It doesn't quite resemble a monkey on the mini map to me. But, oh, it's got advertisement. It is. There is a tournament that it's being played for. These are tournament maps. Um... But I don't, if, I think the term is MKL, is what it was, the abbreviations in English are, but I don't know what that means in China, Chinese, so unfortunately I can't really make much comment there. But um, let's go ahead and get into the map, but we'll go, we'll, we'll kind of look over the map as we kind of play the game. What in the hell? <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what that is. I don't know if this attacks, I don't think it does, it doesn't have an attack. The Sky Fury Tower. Oh, is that, is that a 4K reference to Fury and then Sky, the obvious super Chinese popular caster i don't know is this one different no they're both maybe it's just what well, it's called like a sky fury because it's a reference uh, maybe it's not a reference maybe it's just because it's like this is in the sky and it's all piss i don't know i don't i don't know but Please. screw it <laughs> we're not gonna worry about the map right now so here we have the blade master he's creeping out with the grunt doing this little murloc creep camp seems pretty reasonable uh, we can see a wildkin being crept out by the undead player WFZ. It's going to be this first bit of XP pickup right here. You should maybe get an item from this, you would assume. <laughs> you would assume wrong, if that's what you thought. Um, no item at all. Uh, I'm assuming there's not... Maybe it was... I don't know where it was pulled from. Uh, we can kind of look over here to see if we can find it. On this side, maybe? Was it... What? I don't... Where did he even find that thing? <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know where he pulled that from, but... straight. <laughs> Whatever, you know, we're not going to worry about that. What we are going to say is that he is creeping a little bit further across the map at this goblin merchant. He's going to go ahead and start out with a coil. Whenever you do that versus an orc as an undead player, it's kind of a trade-off because you're, if you're starting out with the coil, and by the way, there's no item from that either, or a tome, which is even which is kind of interesting. It makes me wonder if they've actually played on this map at all themselves. Um, oh, no, 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 there's no tome at all. I was, gonna, I was assuming if there was a tome or an item there, then maybe he just wasn't familiar. So maybe they have. I don't know how popular this map is or when it came out, but it is on version 1.2, so presumably it's been out for a little bit. Uh, he's crept, crept that out. Crept, he crept, crepity crept. He crept that out pretty quickly. And also, look at this. Goblin's Night Scope. This is a pretty cool item. Never seen this before. Uh, provides an increase to the hero's line of sight radius at night when carried. Presumably, that gives him daytime vision during the night, like what elves get with their, uh, their, what's it called, upgrade, ultraviolet upgrade or whatever it is. Um, so that is actually a really nifty item. I don't know if he's going to sell it. No, he's going to keep it. That I mean, I wouldn't sell that. That's actually really good. Uh, if, if that's what it does, I mean, you can kind of see his vision is crazy. Um, that, that's pretty cool. But anyway, to go back to that, he was he was creeping with the, the death coils. He used three death coils on that creep camp. And and if you noticed, um, the timing worked out perfectly. By the time the orc got there, he just finished that creep camp. So that was really cool. 
and I, I've got to say, uh, he still has plenty of mana somehow. I guess because he has this mantle of intelligence, which is giving him an additional increased mana. And they're kind of co-creeping this. Oh, no, it's already crept out. I was going to say, the skeleton's attacking. No, they're attacking a grunt here. He's trying to take this grunt down. He should be able to take it out, uh, maybe without a coil, but it is sped scrolled. Sped scrolled? He's not going to He's not gonna finish chasing off at 15 life. Oh, 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 what's going on? Oh, no, 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 what's going on? My, uh, my mouse is kind of messed up there. Ophine does go down, unfortunately, for WFZ. However, ZDR is not really getting out of this for free. Um, not losing the grunt means he can just healing salve it up. But if it's down to 15 HP, that means it's two charges of healing salve, which is 66 gold. Uh, because, obviously, to heal it all the way up, you have to go for the 400. Uh, but there's still a chance that one of those dies, and in fact, the long-range coil dies. So not only was that 200 gold down for the grunt, that was 33 gold for the healing salve charge. So that was 233 gold. So ZDR, probably not particularly happy about that, but WFZ, I'm sure, pretty happy about it. Uh, we're going to see the Skeleton War. It will get picked off. Not really doing a lot for WFZ, but buying him a bit of time, because he knows exactly where the Orcs Army was right there at that moment in time. Which is better, you know, for him than not knowing that. It's a bit of information. It just means that he knows, okay, the Orc Army is possibly nearby. Um, there's, and he's going to, in fact, assume, and rightfully so, that the Blade Master is there. As he gets a dust off, the Blade Master is going to come in here and scout. Just see what is it, what's happening here. Is it going to be a Tier 2 type thing? Is it going to be a fast Tier 3? And from what he can see, and what he knows, there's a Lich coming out, or a second hero, which you can guess is a Lich. Uh, and then also, there's a Black Citadel happening, which means it's going to have a very delayed Slaughterhouse. And this is, this is an important thing for two reasons. One, if there wasn't a delayed Slaughterhouse, if it was going up right there, he really could have just canceled it with just the Blade Master alone. It dies very quickly um, to the Blade Master focus at level 3. And really, the Blade Master is level 3, and he's got one healing salve charge, and he's got plenty of mana, so he can be pretty aggressive right now. As long as he doesn't get too low on life, he can you know always run away. Because uh, the level 2 death coil will do 140 damage um, instantly in a nuke. So he does have to be slightly careful of that. We do see the undead kind of breaking down one of those elven gates to get into here. There are some juicy uh, creeps, but he's not really looking for those. Also, oh, there is one of these. Uh, I th no, that's just actually a model. It's not actually a shop. I was like, is that actually a dragon shop? Nope. Uh, and it's going to be some really easy creep camps on either side of these elven gates, though, that he will go ahead and take down. It's a little bit of XP that the Blade Master was able to steal. Not a whole lot. He could go for the dust, but he's probably not trying to reveal him right here. Um, unless he has a second dust on that lich, he doesn't. Uh, in fact, he doesn't really have any items it looks like on the lich. I don't think so. Um, Maybe, oh yeah, he did He did give a rod of necromancy. I was like, I thought he did give an item. And he did, uh, the Lich had already used one charge, and then the DK used a charge. And so that's why it's down to two already. It's fine. Gonna go for the Frost Armor and just do some Burrow pushing here. Which is not a bad decision either. There is a level two Shadow Hunter coming in here. There is a Raider as well. Is there in Snare? There is in Snare. However, there is a Crypt Fiend with Frost Armor that is in Snare. We're gonna see already Spirit Link has come out, which means that this is gonna be a bit of a difficult fight for the Undead, but not impossible. Uh, we're going to see the speed scroll as it comes, just trying to get all these units into position around this here. Oh, this fiend, the death knight will be hexed, and that coil is not going to land. You're going to see a little bit of a late frost armor on that fiend. You can see it takes a little bit of additional damage there. And these are a couple of peons just kind of brought in to control the positioning, make it a little bit harder for the orc or the undead to micro his units away. And also, to if he wanted, if he gets another spirit link cast off uh, for that reason as well, because they, they can kind of soak up damage. And they soaked up some hits right there. Now, that will force WFZ to TP out of that fight, burrow all of his fiends, and use this wonderful statue that he finally has, got back out, uh, and he's going to go for the the destroyer. Also, oh, I'm not window locked, that's why. I was wondering why I was having trouble. There we go. Now I can scroll properly. Yay. <laughs> I was like, this is not, something's not right. Um, anyway, so yeah, the undead is now at tier 3. He does have the orb of corruption on his lich, and once that destroyer hits, destroyer form hits, he'll actually be in a reasonable position to kind of fight the un the orc. That was not a good fight for the undead because he had spirit link already out and there's already a level 2 shadow hunter. Um the next fight's not going to be perfectly in his favor cuz the blade master does have an orb of lightning now and and while that's not a particularly scary item in terms of damage, the really scary thing is that it can uh, kind of act as like an unstoppable ensnare, which I guess ensnare is pretty much unstoppable as well, but that's just one of those things. And mainly because it can hit destroyers. And obviously that's what he's going to focus fire is the destroyers. Uh, he's also going to take out the level 5 medicine man, which is a shame for the undead. Also picking up a wand of mana stealing, which is really bad because one, that would have been a fantastic item for the undead to have against the shadow hunter. And also... Undeads really rely on mana, especially in really in any matchup, but I would say in well, most matchups. Also, it looks like we're seeing the Pit Lord. This is a fairly old school strategy that WFC is pulling out here. Um, and creeping with a, a ghoul as well. 
that is <laughs> that's something else. So the, the, the Pit Lord is used for the Howl of Terror because he can reduce the amount of damage coming out from his opponent's units. I'm um, going to go ahead and not take out the, the Centaur Sorceress until he reveals the Blade Master because he knows, obviously, he's there. I'm uh, going to force him just on out of there so he can pick up that XP. Get level 2 on the Lich, which gives him Nova, and the Destroyer is going to be morphed immediately. How much supplies yet? He he's at 49 out of 50, so he's bringing a second ghoul as well. He's got one more statue on the way. Those two extra ghouls in the fight may not seem like much, but they do do a, a significant amount of damage to raiders who have medium armor because they do take... Uh, extra damage from normal attacks, which is what the ghouls do, and you generally focus fire the raiders down pretty much first. Although we will see that Blade Master taking a nice round of Coil Nova. See the ghoul does get focus fired as well. Uh, Pop the potion of invulnerability on the Blade Master already. That has now worn off. The Shadow Hunter can heal him up, but he's going to have to do that very quickly. That's a healing wave. Kind of trying to keep that Blade Master from being too bad in a spot here. He's only at 74 life. He does get nuked down, and he is out of that fight for the rest of this fight. Because uh, there's not really a tavern any place nearby. It looks like maybe in the middle of the map. But uh, now we're going to see some of these raiders just kind of taken down. There's not really much that's going to go good for this orc at this point without the Blade Master in the fight. Uh, and we have three reasonably strong uh, undead heroes right now and as well you can see how much damage these things are doing minus five minus seven the amount of attack damage they can do because of the Hall of Terror from the Pit Lord is quite nerfed uh, and now there's just gonna be some exposed burrows he is tier three he could have gone for the burrow upgrade but he didn't and there's a destroyer now that is going to do additional magic damage to the burrows um, so if he doesn't manage to get that blade master out pretty soon he's gonna be in a bad spot oh he's actually reviving it from the altar uh, which is Again, there's no tavern nearby, so I guess he's thinking, let's get it out. By the time I could maybe get to the tavern, uh, it would already be out. And really, worse, there's not much of a problem if you have the resources, if you're floating enough gold, to go ahead and start reviving him. Because even if you get to the tavern unexpectedly, you can always cancel from the ta or from the altar, and you don't lose anything. You just lose a bit of opportunity cost with that gold. You're going to see this, this raider here going for this obsidian statue. It did not get a frost armor. Uh, it looks like the Lich was saving up for another Frost Nova, which is what he did. He's got 153 and he needs 125 for the Frost Nova. Maybe because he wants to try to nuke down the Shadow Hunter if he can get him a little bit lower. That would be pretty good for him. Uh, but we're going to see another burrow going down. It looks like the Orc already at 32 out of 30 food, so already two supply over. This is really going to set him down to 20 foods max supply. Uh, even if that Blade Master comes out, he is going to be in a really bad position. This has gone exceedingly well for the Orc, uh, for the Undead player. The Orc in just a lot of trouble here. Uh, all he's going to have, and actually it does look like he did get that uh, that burrow upgrade finally, although I never saw it researching from the War Mill. I'm not sure... Um, I'm not really sure what to tell you about that, but it did it did get researched, so <laughs> there is that. He's going to go for the Voodoo Lounge now. The Blade Master has come back out. He's probably going to try to right-click on that statue. Yep, the statue is the mana battery, basically, that keeps the, the undead army able to fight. Uh, and that Blade Master did not even stand a chance by himself, as you can see. I mean, that is a strong amount of focus fire coming straight down from the undead play. The undead saying, listen... I'm not even going to let you creep the map to have a higher level Shadow Hunter. Uh, this went well enough. I have enough XP on my heroes. I'm just going to come out and put a strong push onto your base. And if it goes well for me, you're basically screwed because you can't retreat. And, uh, you know, if you don't kill my heroes, if you don't kill my statues, if you don't kill my units, uh, if you don't take a good encounter, then you're in a lot of trouble. And I'm I'm going to be honest. I'm surprised that uh, this, is <laughs> this is how it went um, because... But it's it's a, one of the strongest points in the game for an undead is right when they hit tier three and they have their research for destroyer form. It's a little bit after they have their three heroes out. They have level three on the death knight. They have level two at least on the lich. Um, and yeah, GG is gonna be called by ZDR. So that's good game. Game one is over and a hugely, uh, completely one-sided. I think after other than that one fight that ZDR took that wasn't really a good fight. It wasn't a necessarily a terrible fight, but other it wasn't it wasn't so bad that it crippled him right. And other than that, I mean, just totally in favor of WFZ, especially that last fight where he just completely decimated. Uh, and also in the early game, I mean, he just outplayed, I, I would say I would say he outplayed uh, uh, ZDR. He knew the exact timing the orc was going to come and creep jack him, and he knew exactly how to uh, counteract that. And he was able to, he lost very little XP early on, uh, and that's just not something that the, the orc wants when they are trying to play such an aggressive strategy. So uh, that was game number one. We're going to go ahead and game go to game number two real quick. We're going to take a... Two minute break and then we'll be right back. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and we'll be right back.